Hey everybody, this is Hal Rains, and I'm here co-hosting with my friend Eileen Imperatrice, and we have a great guest artist today, Doug Francis. Hello. Hey. So that being said, um, Eileen. <laughs> okay, I'll go right into my book. Okay, well today yeah. I'm showing you five paintings that are from two different series, actually. Uh, the first three are from Trapped in Transition, which is from 2007. And uh, so let's go into those pieces first. This is called Lost Within. And during the time of 2007, of course, there's a lot of things that we were preparing for. We had already been given the diagnosis for my husband's polycystic kidney disease and knew we would be going into his transplant in the near future. It ended up being in uh, 2017 that we finally did the transplant. But all during the years prior to that, of course, we were doing a lot of prep, knowing that we would be uh, needing to do that. So there's a lot of time where I felt like I was lost within the process of trying to figure out what to do next. And specifically also during this year, I was in a big transition for what I was doing in my art career. And so I felt kind of trapped between what I had been doing before for my art career locally and where I was going next, expanding into other cities and other uh, states and even out of the country. So there was a little bit of transition time and that's where I felt lost within. And you can see some images of chairs drawn in there that I use on a regular basis to represent myself, but also the figure just wandering within the uh, whole scene that you see there with some vellum attached to the canvas. This is oil on canvas and then vellum that's actually attached with paint on the canvas. The next piece we'll go to is called Puppy. The wonderful story behind this is that uh, right before the Rogue Festival, which we hosted in our gallery for many years at Ashtree Studios, uh, there was a little puppy that just showed up at our front door at our house. And it was after a storm, I believe, and she just kind of showed up at our front door and we didn't know what to do. We went around to our neighbors trying to find out who she belonged to and nobody claimed her. So we took her in and we already had three dogs at the time but we definitely thought she was adorable, took her in and took care of her. And we took her to the vet right away to find out if she was okay. And they said she was pregnant. And so we knew we weren't gonna be able to keep her or the puppies, but uh, we certainly wanted to help her along and kept her in our house. And so all during that time when we were going through her pregnancy and even though we knew we would be uh, giving her to someone else because there was another person that adopted her and her puppies together, thankfully, uh, we got very attached to her, of course, and so I decided to do this piece about her and then the experience that she gave us by having a birth in our house of these two little beautiful puppies. Um, so that's what this piece is about, the continuation of life and uh, the center image on vellum hanging with twine between the two oil and canvas is an uh, outline of a picture of her and her puppies with her. So that was just a really wonderful memory to share about um, the transition of life. Now the next piece you'll see is called Remnants. And this deals with a divorce, not mine, but my uh, relatives that had a divorce and watching when they were taking all of the remaining furniture out of their house, as they were giving up their things, there was one chair that had a missing leg and was kind of obviously not in best shape. And I really was struck by the look of it and thinking about how it's a remnant of their marriage. They had had this chair, a part of mm -hmm. their dining room set in their house, you know, it was a house that they were making together of happy memories. And then of course, when they finally decided to get a divorce, um, once the divvying up of all the property and assets, and then you have the furniture and this one piece that just did not make it and was thrown out. And I thought what a fitting um, reflection on the loss yeah. of a marriage and the loss of a relationship. And it was just the remnants yeah, that really is a great metaphor. Saw. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, it was something that just really hit me hard and I felt sorry for them. They're both wonderful people, but it just didn't work out. And then just being able to do this outline of the, the chair and different parts of it. And then there's that vellum again that I'd sketched on and attached it to the oil paint um, on the canvas itself. So it's all part of the uh, same piece. Now the uh, next piece coming up is called Gender Neutral. And this and the next piece after this are the two that are in a different series that are called, uh, the series is called Nece Necessity Finds Illumination. And it's from 2012. And this series was really um, 
it's a funny story because it comes from a picture that a friend of mine who's a very famous poet uh, had shared and I found the piece that he had shared very interesting and I said do you mind if I use that idea and then I decided this whole series called about illumination and just kind of bringing forward some ideas that I thought needed to be out there and so this piece is called gender neutral and it's really reflecting on the fact that for women especially there are times where we wish that it wasn't so much about our gender and that we could just be treated as a fellow human being and so there's a point where you wish that gender could be neutral and not a factor in deciding on whether you're worthy of one thing or not. I think we're getting a little closer to that, certainly, but there are still definitely some um, differences in how people are treated based on their gender. So that's what this came from and the idea of the female form being protected behind um, those planks. And then it's kind of a dreamy feeling with the cloud imagery and then the outside edges being a rubbed oil paint on top it's a whole textural thing that I wanted to create the feeling that there's a lot of confusion and a lot of uh, misunderstandings. And so that's well, where, you, yeah, where with, this piece comes with, from. Yeah, I can see that. And, and it is it is really evident even in our society today that, oh my gosh, women are, um, we like to think we're way beyond the idea of women and children being chattel, but um, it's certainly not that way in a lot of cultures and it's not where it should be yet in America either, so. And religion, right. I think, right. has a lot to do with that. You know, that's my personal slice of that pie. I just think that sure. it's too bad. Yeah, but. I think there's a lot of things that factor into that. And I think that's yeah. why for myself as an artist, you know, all I can do authentically is express my own feelings about where my part is in this world. And as a female, yeah. I have that voice to be able to share that. And um you know, just make that known for people to think about and yeah, discuss. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so then this final next piece is called Safe House and it mirrors that same type of treatment that you saw in the previous piece. There were three pieces that looked very similar and the uh, third piece, which had a tree in it, actually sold right away. So I no longer have that piece. But this piece I also still have, which is called Safe House. And again, I usually use the chairs to represent myself. I've never done a self-portrait where it was actually my physical self, but I always felt that the chairs represented me very well. And so whenever I use a chair, it was representing something that I specifically felt very strongly about. And for this piece, I think it really transcends time because safe house is all about where you feel safe, where you feel most protected, where you feel like you can really be yourself. And there's still a point where you have to find some kind of area to, to do that because there's a lot of places that you're not. And especially right now, I think it really speaks to our current situation with the pandemic, trying to find those safe places. Because for me in particular, because I went through cancer just this last year battling cancer, and I'm currently in remission, thank goodness, but my immune system is completely screwed up because of the uh, cancer treatments. So my immune system is not there protecting me at the moment. And I definitely believe in the vaccine and was so happy to get it but unfortunately it's not completely effective in those of us who have immune systems that are not working healthy. So I'm having to be very, very extra precautious or extra cautious, I should say, and do a lot of precautions in my daily life to make sure that I don't be exposed to uh, or don't get exposed to all of the uh, various um, variants that are out there from the virus that we have at the moment. So finding those safe houses, I think we can do it in a lot of different ways, but then also just in general, you know, now it, it speaks again to where we are in our point in time with the uh, pandemic. In general, society has still a lot to improve on, and that's going to be the case, I think, till the end of time. I just hope right. that we continue to, to build on that, you know, and do get better. But now let's definitely yeah. take a look at your work. I'd like to see the pottery that you're doing, and okay. uh, I know you have some photos this week of some things you've been working on. So let's take a look at yeah. that. Okay, cool. That is going to be a good thing. Um, usually you have the videos, but this time I just decided to send the pictures in. So here we go. There we go. This is a, a moon vase and uh, typically they're uncovered, but I wanted this one to be, you know, covered because I, I, I like to push myself in different ways. So with the textures and we've talked about slip and, you know, applying them and chattering with different techniques and stuff like that. So 
this is the piece when it's all assembled, you know, and it's got the big lid on top of it where you can see that, but there'll be close-ups of the jar itself in just a minute. And then you'll see the lid by itself too. So lots and lots of work to put this together. You know how you'll have a background that's black, which, you know, you put your coating on your, uh, on your, um, canvas and then you'll layer it so you get really nice steps well that's what i did with this and it was blue you know almost like a turquoise -y. there you go and then oh, i yeah. uh put with the yellow undercoat over well actually over all of that the underglaze and then on top of, of all that then i covered the thing completely with porcelain and uh then it was started you know the whittling away and carving away the layers and you know so that's that's how it came out all together, and I just love the piece. So, next one. Okay, so I've started working with different types of clay bodies and putting them, you know, together. So that's not always effective. And this is basically me taking two different kinds of reclaimed clay, you know, some stuff that I had used earlier, and I didn't like the way it came out, so I, you know, smashed the pieces, and. Um, then once they were dry, you kind of uh, pulverize the, the clay itself and then put water in it and begin to work it up so it's consistency, so you can actually get a really nice result with it. So one of them is um, called, uh, well, it's a type of porcelain, basically. And the other one is just a cone six um, speckled buff, which I love the body. I love the way the clay body works. And so getting these at the same elasticity, you know, and then putting them together, folding them uh, was a really, really nice surprise because I've seen other people do this, but I didn't think I would be successful myself. So it was an interesting I'm thing. With the, uh, I'm always impressed with the bowls that are kind of fluted out like that. There has to be a point at where you have to wait till it sort of dries a little bit in order to make those ripples because I would think it would tend to sag if you don't <laughs> I mean am I wrong is it is there a certain you're, texture you're absolutely you're feeling for hardness? yeah you're right they have to be in a specific place and if they're a little bit too soft yeah they sag and then you'll lose the bowl because they just collapse you know right. so it does it does take a, a kind of a, a finesse to make sure you get it right and it for me it took a long time to be able to figure out how to get that without it just turning into a puddle of goo. So, yeah, thank you. I'm That's glad you practice. like it. Yeah, practice. <laughs> That's good. It? Yeah. So, okay, so this one you can see basically, um, it's just a different, it's the same clay bodies, the same two clay bodies. And um, depending on where you look at it, you know, from the back, because it, it has a similar pattern on the back, but given that it's, you know, like a quarter of an inch thick, on the back side, the clay plays completely differently. So, but I only wanted to show you the inside of the bowl because I know we're limited on time. So um, again, this, I love the way it is. Now this one is really an interesting piece. You see how it has those almost like flutes around the top of it? You can see how it's mm -hmm. kind of shadowy. So that one, um, I worked really hard to get that look. Um, there are times when I really would like to be ultra smooth, but um, it just wasn't coming out. And then I thought, okay, I have to make, I have to figure out a way to standardize this look all the way around it. So I, it was a matter of uh, picking a really big rib and then kind of bouncing that rib to get that, that definite effect. So um, I learned something and that's what we always try to do when we're working with a piece is what, you know, what's the takeaway? You know, I, I'm better at throwing different kinds of clay than I thought I would be. Um, I have one right mm -hmm. now that's, ooh, brutal. And I'm not sure I'm going to uh, talk about that one maybe next time, but um, we'll see. So, which brings us to right. Don. Oh, go ahead. All right. I was just going to say, I love the marbling that you do on those two, where it's a lot of different color of clips like. I really like that. That's really, really cool. Oh, good, <laughs> good. Yours All too. Right. Well, so. now let me uh, take the opportunity to or introduce, introduce our guest artist, Dob Francis. He is known as Dob the Art, and he definitely is because he's got quite an impressive resume of doing a lot of different types of art. 
uh, not just murals and uh, scenery for plays and things like that, but then also a lot of paintings like you see behind him there in his studio. He does some incredible work and uh, obviously has done a lot of methods and worked with a lot of people. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what you share with us today, Dob. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to say both of your works are incredible. Um, Thank you. Uh, very, very um, inspiring as it were. Thank you. Uh, this is Frankenstein. Um, he's the first in a series of uh, old classic movie monsters. Uh, if you look, you can see that in his forehead, there's a cemetery. If you go from there up to the upper right is the building that he's in, the castle with being hit by lightning. Uh, if you go over to the left side, you'll see the Tesla coil with lightning bolts striking at his heart, which is made of skulls. Um, if you go along his hand and his sleeve, you'll see more cemetery and so forth. The village people are all along his shoulder and the community as they're coming to raid the castle. <laughs> oh my gosh. So cool. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, this one is Starry Starry Night, Dark Winter. <laughs> uh, yeah. There are a lot of uh, winter ghosts and uh, imbibed spirits in the sky, the village in the very bottom with the lights and so forth is very Van Gogh in, in style. This is Swirls and Stripes, all right? It's, uh, it's basically using acrylic paint and a spatula to push and pull and scrape your colors around the canvas with layers of washes and dry brushing. This is Lost at Sea. This looks um, so tactile. You should, like you, you should be able to just feel those, the waves as they break, you know? It looks yeah, like I was you should a, be able to feel that texture. Thank you. Um, uh, I was in a really uh, difficult place. One of my dearest friends was passing away. Of, uh, this was about eight years ago. And uh, <clears throat> the emotions of the time were, were, were what I was overwhelming. If you look, you'll see faces in the foam. And you'll see images and things. Um, thank you. <laughs> Wow. Hmm. This is called evaporation, and that's that moment where a liquid becomes gas, whether it be water or anything else. The molecules shift and they become more vibrant. This is Wisteria Dreams. Um, against the left side, you'll see the shadow of a man who's leaning against the wall, his beard, his shoulders, his knees come forward. He's under a wisteria tree and there are maids and maidens and other people in the background and the negative space creates other images. In front of him, there are rabbits and cats. And if you look in the alley, you see people in the alley and the hooded people looking around the corner. And I mean, there, there are many, many different other objects within the images. This one's called Smoker's Dream, and right now it's on tour in Italy. Um, <clears throat> it's very lewd, <laughs> and basically you can see the giant face of a man, his nose, he's got a cigarette in his mouth that's burning. Around him is the smoke and the delusions of fantasy. What? This is energy. It's like a burst of solar explosion of life and color and energy and you'll see people and things around the edges and each and every line goes all the way through the entire piece so you can follow it this is adam and eve okay this is the moment god takes the breath out of adam and breathes life into eve that's why when you fall in love you lose your breath <laughs> These are my mermaids. Really pretty. And just, there's a seal of approval in the corner. Um, <laughs> but uh, there's uh, turtles and fish and sunken ships and treasure. And this one's that, been to one was, Oh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Just go lovely ahead. layers. No, just oh, so cool. many beautiful layers in that piece. Yeah, all of your work has layers, but this one is just 
wow, just so so stacked and intricate, you know. Oh, right, thank you very much. You um, go ahead. No, I was just thinking it just must take forever to uh, do you work quickly or is it kind of labored? It depends. Um, the werewolf over on that side <laughs> uh, took about two days. Dracula's taken six, right, years. Um, <laughs> sometimes they come out really quickly and sometimes uh, the initial comes out really quickly and then they take the detailing. Oh, right, right. This one came out in one afternoon. I had painted two other pieces and then I had one canvas left and the song Red Skies at Night came on. And so I grabbed all the colors that were red and kind of toned and started playing. By the time the song was over, this was finished. Golly. This is down the rabbit hole, kind of in spring when you're watching rabbits run across the field and you look down the hole, they just run down. And you see the eye at the end of the tunnel looking back. Yeah. And then there are fantasy images and distorted characters of fairies and nymphs and things in the woods. And... This is Sleeping Lady, right? And a lot of rainbow spirals and explosions. And again, I was in a phase where every line within the piece you could put your finger on and run it through and fly in the other end. It's a, this one's actually got a little texture to it. This is combined energy, right? There's love, there's a relationship between a male and a female and all the universal ex explosion that goes on with that. <laughs> um, this is a trip between death and life or life and death, depending on how you look at the piece. Because you can see faces or you can see skulls and then you can see skulls that turn into faces or that you were just looking at as a face that becomes a skull <laughs> uh this was an announcement for one of the competitions i was in in belgrade where i was the featured artist of the event the two on the bottom left right uh spiral world and frankenstein are both mine this is a backdrop from Shakespeare, uh, Merced Shakespeare Fest. Just the uh, dinner table on the king's dinner table, right, was painted. It couldn't be on the set because it's an amphitheater. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Uh, this is my first attempt with Grolsch, uh, the paint that's kind of watercolor, but acrylic, but not acrylic. <laughs> What's it called again? Grolsch, G H R O. U C H. I need to look that Anyways. up. Anyways, yeah, it's a really kind of fun because you can put a a quantity of color down and then play with it and move it around and like watercolor. Yeah. Right, so that you can you can get a whole bunch of different varieties of shade, tone, and texture. Uh, here in Mariposa, they had a history play that they were doing on the amphitheater in the park. And this is carved styrofoam that was used to suggest the environment of Yosemite Valley and Mariposa. Yeah, it looks like it could be clay. Hot, I used a mm -hmm. hot foam cutting knife. Um, <clears throat> Another Shakespearean backdrop, this is the Songs of Illyria was the switch title because they added music to it and it was, anyway. Uh, this is a castle, right, on the top of the mountain in the backdrop and it was way off in the distance, but that's a close-up shot. Um, this again was with that same material and really bright colors having fun right playing both with watercolor technique as well as the scraping with the spatula they're set can you tell these. aren't they wonderful <laughs> they really are 
And again, there are faces. When I get bored in an artwork, there are faces always. Um, this one actually has Donald Trump over here to the left-hand side of the, the image. You can see his lip and chin and then his nose, and you'll see the rest of him filled in. <laughs> well. Some, sometimes your artwork does things when you don't expect it, because I was done sitting <laughs> down and then I thought, <laughs> yeah. Um, this is soapstone. Um, a lot of this was just carved with a pick by hand. If you look to the upper right of the carving, you'll see a man bent over and panning for gold, and then you'll notice the river and the trees, right? And all around him, there are, are different environs of trees and rocky areas. On the other side of the stone, there's a woman, right? Uh, <laughs> this is the nativity. This is the universe The, you know, if you look, you'll see the wise men and the infant and Mary in the center. Right. And then you see faces within all around in the universe of creation. This is either a swamp with a castle off in the distance or a whole bunch of other things. <laughs> this is eye on time. You'll see a whole parade of horses, right? Um, there are bodies, there are wars and battles, there are history, there are buildings of iniquity or uh, antiquity. Um, it's just multiple layers of shapes and time and uh, fluidity. Mm -hmm. wow. Amazing work. Well, <laughs> I'm really you. impressed with everything you do. Well, that's probably about our time today. I think I need to get up and spend some time with you in Mariposa. Uh, we can go uh, awesome. stir up some mischief <laughs> up there. <clears throat> I'm no doubt. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how I feel. Too. Yeah. So we will. Um, I I, I want to just watch how you get the layers too, because the complexity oh, no, of probably. the pieces. When I walk by, I, I was like. I know if I just walked by a piece, it would capture me and uh, I probably would lose myself in your trying to get in your head and just talk you to death. But uh, one of the funnest fun. one of the funnest things for me is that when I was working with the art hop in, in Merced, yeah, mm -hmm. people would walk by and they do that. They oh, smeared color and they keep walking. Then they walk back by and I'd say, hey, did you happen to see this? And I'd show them one little thing in it. And all of a sudden, the whole picture unfolded in front of their eyes, and they, <gasps> and I, I was thrilled with those little moments, those tiny little moments. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. You're teaching yeah, people yeah. how to really look at art because I think that is something that happens a lot. People tend to just glance and then they walk away, and they don't really take time to involve themselves with art and look at it from another angle and just really, you know, see what they can see. And I think people are just looking for the fast idea and walk away. So it's does it I'm fit behind the couch and look like grandma? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how everything's marketed. You know, it's so fast. So, um, that being said, guys, it's been a wonderful show. Dob, thank you for being our guest today. And uh, thank you for having I'm me. I'm going to reach out to you soon. Soon, <laughs> Eileen, always a joy, just a real pleasure to work with you. And, guys, that's our full TV today. So thank you so much. Take care.